reparations are coming whether you want it or not whether it makes sense or not boston has now jumped into the ring with a desperate appeal to give money to people that have never been slaves while taking that money from people that never owned slaves <laughs> this should be fun so boston has set up a reparations task force to determine how much money to give to the black community they're also going to determine if black immigrants should also be given money. Now, this is a serious committee with financial analysts and historical scholars to dig deep into the historical issues and make a reasonable determination. <laughs> now, nah, I'm just kidding. They picked a few high school students and a BLM activist. Seriously, high school juniors Damani Williams and Denelson Fanfan, as well as a 22-year-old University of Massachusetts student and Black Lives Matter organizer Carrie Mays, were named to the city's reparations task force. Listen, I, I hope they decide to give every black person a million dollars. It doesn't matter if they were slaves or not. Very, very few slaves in Boston, by the way. It doesn't even matter if they are Haitian migrants that arrived last week. Hey, if you got dark skin, you get free money. Now, it's common knowledge that black people in the South owned black slaves. Uh, in fact, the very first legal slave owner in the South was a black man. If black people owned black slaves, uh, they should also be paid money. Every black person absolutely deserves free money just for being black. I mean, it's only fair. Being black is really hard. And not one single black person can ever be successful in this country because they're being held back by white people. I mean, white people are bad, am I right? But listen, don't tell this to Obama or Oprah or Justice Thomas or Shaq. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Thomas Sowell, Nick Cannon, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, Kamala Harris, or anyone like that. They aren't real black people. Black people cannot be successful in this country because they need help from white people to be successful. Wait, hold on. That can't be right. I mean, white people are evil, right? No, wait a minute. How did Obama get millions of votes from white people? and then get elected president. Well, something here doesn't make any sense. Are white people evil when they're... Wait, are white people not evil when they're voting for a black man, but then they're evil the rest of the time? Well, what about white people that hire black people? Are they evil? Okay, so <laughs> the money for reparations, where does that come from? Well, the first response would be taxes. But... Quite simply, there will never be enough tax money to pay for that. We're talking about billions, maybe even trillions of dollars. So let's game this out. Say you and your neighbor both work, and you make about the same amount, $50,000 per year. I mean, it's not a fortune, but you're happy and you're getting by. Your neighbor is black. It was never a problem. Your kids play together. Everyone gets together on the 4th of July for a barbecue. Every now and then you gather and watch the game on Sunday. Everything is cool. Then one day your neighbor gets a million dollars just because he's black. You get nothing. So what happens next when he pulls up in his new car and suddenly has enough extra money to put in a pool? I sense a little resentment brewing. But this is happening all over town. Your city is now flush with cash, money flowing everywhere. So the prices go up. I mean, a gallon of milk used to cost three bucks, but now it's five bucks. For the people with a brand new fortune, it doesn't even matter. They've got more money than they could have dreamed of. An extra two bucks for milk? Who cares? But all the people that didn't get reparations, these price increases are hitting hard. It's basic market dynamics. When there's extra money in the system, the supply and demand metric is broken. And there's still the same amount of demand, but the supply of money has gone crazy. So prices go up on everything. It's not just $2 for milk. It's an extra $5 at McDonald's. 
it's an extra $500 for lumber because everyone's adding a new deck to their house. And forget about cars. The price just doubled because every black person can now afford a new car at the same time. But there's still limited cars available, so the price jumps exponentially. Well, what happens to everyone who didn't get reparations? Now, keep in mind, that's 85% of the population. Well, they're rightfully pretty angry. If anyone has a brother or sister, just think back to how you felt when your sibling got an extra piece of candy or an extra scoop of ice cream. It was pandemonium. Now, this will be worse. It'll break the country apart. It would not be unreasonable for many people to suddenly quit their jobs. Yeah, that's what happens when you get a million dollars suddenly added to your bank account. That's a common response. But when the money runs out, and that can be as quickly as a few months, see any basic info on lottery winner statistics. These people will start looking for jobs again. And guess what? The 85% of the country is going to be bitter and angry. Most small business owners will not be receiving reparations. Do you think they want to hire someone who just got a million dollars they didn't earn and then just wasted it? I'm not a psychologist, but I've been around the block once or twice, and I can tell you that most would never hire someone like that. And you thought it was bad, but this is where the problem really starts. So now you've got 300 million people that are pissed off and angry at a very specific group of people. Well, they're not going to give them jobs. They're not going to give them loans. There might be some people that are so upset they won't provide services to them. You need a plumber? Oh, so sorry. Schedule's full. You need to rent a car? Geez, sorry. Uh, no cars available. What if you're hungry? Sorry, we don't serve your kind here. Now, to anyone that's a world traveler, America is the least racist country on the planet. If they start handing out reparations, it will instantly become the most racist country on the planet. You just wait and see. It'll happen much faster than you can even imagine. Now, I did say taxes might be used to pay for this, but that's just unrealistic. In fact, the Federal Reserve will just print the money into existence. So the good news is that taxes will not go up, probably. But with the increase in money supply, it will naturally affect demand. That's that old chestnut supply and demand. You can't escape it. And when you increase the money supply, it doesn't matter how you increase it, it will affect demand. Now, prices go up. They have to go up. It's just how things work. But in this case, it'll affect things globally. Because so many countries use U.S. dollars for their money supply, when you introduce a few trillion, it's going to cause a mess. Things are going to get expensive everywhere. And other countries will start fleeing from the dollar into safe havens like gold or Chinese yuan or even Russian rubles. Believe it or not, reparations will cause a global money meltdown. And it will completely, 100% destroy the USA. You think I'm being hyperbolic? You just wait and see. If they start this, you'll be able to watch it break down in real time, and it will be fast. If they pay $1 in reparations, it'll open the floodgates, and the USA is over. I don't care if you think I'm right or not. I absolutely know that I'm correct. YouTube is forever. You can watch this 20 years from now and leave a comment. Oh my God, how did he know? Just understand that I did know. And I tried to get the message out to anyone who is listening. What do you think? Drop some comments. I got to hear what you think. You like it? You don't like it? You deserve it? They don't deserve it? Speak up because uh, it's coming whether you like it or not. So I got another video coming later, so I'll see you soon.